Well, the agonizing death of Namali Henry, who was a young mother and died inside of the St. Bernard Parish Jail, sent shockwaves all the way to the Justice Department in Washington, D.C. Yeah, and after the civil rights trial, four deputies are now going to prison. Seven years after Namali's death, two more inmates in that prison have died just in the past two years, leaving behind grieving families and mounting legal issues. And as investigative reporter Mike Pearlstein reveals, like Namali, their deaths could have been prevented. Marvin Walker was brought to St. Bernard Parish Prison in December 2020 after deputies stopped him for a traffic violation and noticed an attachment for a missed court date. Walker was in good spirits, despite his issues with substance abuse and drug addiction. It didn't seem like anything was wrong with Marvin at all. Marvin watched the whole LSU game. He and the deputy. Both of them screaming and hollering at the, the TV. Walker's mother, Angela, grew nervous when she heard that her 28-year-old son had been picked up. The deputy told her he would be fine, but would probably not be released until he could see a judge to get a new court date. He said, so don't worry about him. He's going to be all right. I was concerned because after that happened to the young lady, you know, and my son going in there with his addiction, I was worried that he seek the proper help he needs. Like many people in St. Bernard, Angela Walker knew all about the death of 19-year-old Namali Henry at the jail in 2014. The young mother deteriorated behind bars for 10 days from a rare but treatable illness. Denied life-saving medication, denied medical help, even after fellow inmates told deputies she was dying. Like so many people fake in jail, and the deputies use that for everybody. And that's not the case. Some people are not faking. When that same deputy who assured Mrs. Walker came to her door again four days later, her heart sank. She knew. You don't just die in jail. You know, like that you're supposed to be there to watch over everyone that's there. This wrongful death lawsuit against the sheriff's office on behalf of Walker's family claims he died after suffering drug withdrawal symptoms. Experts say that with proper medical care, even withdrawal by hardcore addicts can be managed. Gary Bazal, the family's attorney, says that didn't happen for Marvin Walker, and he ultimately died of complications from Xanax withdrawal. In this case, he clearly wasn't, and deteriorated over a uh, a three and a half, four day period. The lawsuit cites inmates who witnessed Walker in grave distress. While records show he was given medicine for his withdrawal symptoms, he was unable to keep the medicine down. One inmate is quoted in the suit saying he asked several times for Walker to be taken to the hospital and quote, observed Walker at least twice to be covered in his own vomit, feces, and urine. The lawsuit states that the inmates requests were ignored by deputies and a nurse stating that they told him, quote, Walker would have to deal with it. They said he was going to die. He said he was going to die, and he died. So this was absolutely preventable. It hurts me so bad. My child, my child, my baby boy, who I love so much. We reached out to Sheriff Pullman for comment, but his office declined, citing the ongoing litigation. The litigation doesn't just include the wrongful death claims on behalf of Walker and Namali Henry. Three months before Walker died, another inmate, Eddie Mixon Jr., also died in the jail. This lawsuit, filed by the 50-year-old's wife and daughter, claims that jailers, quote, refused or neglected to provide him with appropriate medical care for a heart condition and high blood pressure. It's a relatively small jail for three deaths to happen in four and a half, five years. Barry Bernadis is the former FBI analyst who tipped off federal agents that Namali's gradual decline was neglected by deputies. Those claims are also made in the Mixon and Walker lawsuits. They could have saved that, that young woman. Even, the, even if they didn't give her a medication, they could have sent her to the hospital when she got sick. But they did nothing. But there is one big difference between the circumstances of Namali's death and the men who died in the jail more than five years later. The sheriff's office hired a healthcare contractor within two years of her death, Correct Health, 
a company based in Atlanta. In the Walker lawsuit, Correct Health is also named as a defendant. Bazal said both deputies and the healthcare contractors missed Walker's obvious signs of distress, even though they were hired to handle medical screening and care of inmates, including the administration of needed medication. Essentially, you just watch somebody die a slow death, which is what happened to Mr. Walker in this case. Nobody cared enough to, to do what should have been done in this case. Bizal said that includes the sheriff. But ultimately, he's the captain of the ship and responsible for what happens in the, in the prison. Angela Walker had been too distraught to publicly talk about her son's death. But after seeing troubling similarities as the Namali Henry case played out in court, she decided to break her silence to Channel 4. And I'm just looking at how could this have happened again? Years ago it happened, now it's happening again. I couldn't even talk about it at the moment. You know, that's how hard it hit our family. All I have is these pictures here of my child. I could never hold it. I can never hear, I love you. Will call me every day and tell me, Mommy, I love you. Mike Pearlstein reporting the attorney who filed that wrongful death lawsuit on behalf of Namali Henry's young daughter sent us a statement saying, quote, we believe that if this case was properly investigated and handled in a more timely manner, mandated changes would have prevented the deaths of Eddie Mixon and Marvin Walker.